Whether it's a sublime ballet of starlings or an unstoppable infantry of locusts, there's no denying that swarming animals are an astounding sight. Tens of thousands of creatures acting with a single purpose as if with one mind. But just why and how do they do it? And is there such thing as a human swarm? Herring gang together in vast schools to make it easier to feed on their prey, tiny crustaceans called copepods. Copepods can jump suddenly sideways in the water by several centimetres, so the fish in the school are precisely spaced so that jumping prey spring out of the frying pan and into the open mouths of the herring. A swirling, seething crowd of animals can also offer protection from predators. Starling murmurations are a magical sight, and their intangible, ever-changing beauty arises from a desperate need to survive. The birds are hunted by peregrine falcons, and by sticking together, they have thousands of eyes and ears on the lookout for an attack. With each bird trying to mimic the movements of its neighbour, the result is a flowing and contorting mass of feathers, making it really hard for falcons to lock onto any one individual. So the why of swarms can be explained by the three evolutionary urges, survive, feed and reproduce. But just how they do it isn't that obvious. Scientists have been studying insect swarms to try and find the answers. Locusts swarm after periods of wet weather, with millions of individuals emerging from eggs buried in the sand. They then begin a march, and then a flight that can decimate vegetation over hundreds of kilometres. When there are only a few locusts in an area, they tend to just wander around, changing direction a lot, making slow progress. But when their numbers hit a critical threshold, specifically 74 insects per square metre, they suddenly gain a sense of purpose and begin their unstoppable march. That purpose is one of survival, to avoid getting eaten by their cannibalistic brothers behind them and to try take a bite out of the locust in front of them. So locust swarms are chaotic, but there's no swarming more organised and efficient than that of army ants, who can form three-lane highways and even bridges to get where they need to go. This extraordinary organisation is controlled by just two instincts. Follow the trail and don't bang into your neighbour. When a food source is found, an ant scout lays down a chemical trail for others to follow. The workers leave the nest, sweeping the air with their antennae to find and follow the trail. But if their sensitive antennae brush against another ant, they turn away just enough to avoid a collision without losing the scent. The result is an organised infantry marching in close, relentless formation, all on the basis of just two orders. Now, while the movement of army ants might be compared to an ordered march to battle or a busy morning commute, are these human activities really swarms? There's no denying that football crowds, summer beachgoers and sales shoppers have the single-minded and sometimes destructive power of a pestilent swarm. But on a biological level, they're fundamentally different. The one factor that keeps a swarm moving together is the instant instinctive feedback between each individual. If one moves, its neighbour moves to follow subconsciously. Humans simply don't have that instant subconscious feedback. So when one human moves, their neighbour doesn't, and things can get messy rather quickly. So, many humans in a room doesn't make a swarm, just a rather chaotic crowd. Here at Earth Unplugged, we answer fascinating questions about the natural world. Click here to watch more from me and let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe to Earth Unplugged.